Hello and welcome to Jeremy's Retro Bar. I'm Jeremy and this is my Retro Bar. And this week we're gonna finish the restoration of what's under this blanket, the Compact Desk Pro 386-25E. But of course, first, we're gonna need to make ourselves a drink. For this week's drink, we're just gonna stick with the coconut theme and we're gonna make a coconut margarita. We're gonna start off with two ounces of cream of coconut. Then we're gonna add two ounces of Anyo tequila. Then I'm gonna add one ounce of lime juice. One half ounce of triple sec, or I'm using Contro. And then we're gonna add crushed ice. And we're gonna shake for about 10 seconds. And we're gonna strain into a cocktail glass. And we'll add a slice of lime as a garnish. And there we have a coconut margarita. That's very good. It's much creamier than a normal margarita, but oh man, that's great. All right, let's get back to the restoration. After about eight hours in the sun, I removed the plastics from the RetroBrite solution. And then I give them a good rinse. The keys of the keyboard are still yellowed, so I'm gonna put them in for another day of retro brighting goodness. And here we can see the before and after. The after on the left and the before on the right. And here are the face plates, before on the bottom and after on top. Now let's get this put back together. I'm going to start by putting in the six screws that hold the faceplate on. And then of course we'll go ahead and put the back plate on. I'll put this floppy drive back together. And then I'll put this other floppy drive back together. So it's a day later and uh, we got the keys back from the RetroBrite solution. So now it's time to just start popping them back in the keyboard. As I put the keys back, I'm starting to notice that the darker gray keys are over bleached. I must have left them in the RetroBrite solution too long. I assumed they had yellowed at the same rate as the lighter keys, but I was incorrect in that assumption. So I should have taken the gray keys out. They're a little bit too light, but oh well, that's what happens. I've never RetroBrited anything before. Now that that's all put together, it's time to replace this Dallas clock battery. I have a replacement that I got from Tindy that I'm gonna use as the replacement. So we'll just need to desolder these legs and then we can pull it out. And now with all the legs desoldered, I'm gonna go ahead and pull on this clock battery a little bit and hopefully I can get these legs to come through. And it just popped off and none of the legs came through. Oh, I'm an idiot. It was socketed. I didn't have to do any of this desoldering. <laughs> To be fair, this is the fourth one of these that I've replaced, and this is the first one that hasn't been soldered into the motherboard. All right, let's get the soldering iron out. Let's put all this back. And 
now with everything back the way it was five minutes ago, I'm going to go ahead and put in the battery replacement. Let's put it all back together. I'm going to start by installing the motherboard, then adding our cables for our drives, and the speaker, and then we'll put in the drive cage. And into this will go our blank and our two floppy drives. Oops, I almost forgot the case fan. Out with the drive cage, in with the case fan, and then back in with the drive cage. So I'm going to be replacing the hard drive with a compact flash to IDE adapter, but I don't have a good spot to mount it, so I'm going to go ahead and put some electrical tape on the back of it to protect these contacts so it doesn't short out, because it's probably just going to be kind of hanging loose here in the cage. At least until I can find a better mounting solution. Compact Desk Pro 386-25E comes with 8 megabytes of RAM on the motherboard. To add RAM, you actually have to use this daughter card. And I've got one in each of these two computers, each with 4 megabytes. But each daughter card will hold two modules, two RAM modules. And so those are 4 megabytes each. So I'm pulling one of the RAM modules from the other computer, popping it on here, so I'm adding a total of 8 megabytes of RAM, bringing our total RAM in this 386 up to 16 megabytes. And of course, any good retro computer is going to need a sound card. So I'm adding a Sound Blaster 16, model CT2230, which is a Sound Blaster 16 that does not have the hanging note glitch and also still has a real OPL3. Got this guy put back together for the most part. Um, just have the case off right now because what I'm going to do is use this GoTech to load in some software right now. Um, I didn't want to put a GoTech in it because I didn't like that it wouldn't match the front style of this. And really, you only need the GoTech for the setup, and then I can just pull out the Compact Flash, copy any files over. So first, we're going to go ahead and see if it works. Um, so uh, let's go ahead and flip the switch on and see what we get. And you can see our RAM count. And it looks like our memory expansion worked. We have a full 16 megs of RAM. And our flash floppy seems to be booting and telling me that we need to run everything. So uh, I switched the monitor out because uh, it kept popping and also the refresh rate was a little weird. This one uh, obviously is a lot cleaner and easier to see, and uh, I'm gonna have to do a recap on that other monitor that would match this computer. So just like the IBM machines, the BIOS isn't built into uh, to it. We have to have a disk in order to set it up. So here we go. Let's hopefully this, hopefully this is the right version. Okay. Options not set, time and date not set. So we did replace our battery. Hopefully we'll see if it's working. Let's try 49 and see if it sees that. 
try the biggest that we get. Exit and save changes. All right, let's see if that works. CMOS must have worked because we're not getting any errors. Oh, but now it can't boot from that because it thinks it's a higher density drive. Yup. Alright. So the Compact BIOS doesn't let you enter your own drive geometry, it only has preset drives, which I'm sure was great at the time because you could put any pre-built hard drive into it. But the problem with compact flash to IDE adapters is the compact flash will only emulate certain geometries. And I don't know which of those drives that you can choose from and which density of a compact flash card will match up in order to work. To save myself from all that headache, I decided to install a SCSI card and a SCSI to SD. Now this is a version 5.2, which in the past I've tried on other PCs with the same SCSI card and it didn't work. But good news is there was a firmware update. So now the SCSI to SD 5.2 does work with Adaptech controller cards for PCs. So you can see here, the SCSI BIOS loads, and also it recognizes both of the drives that I configured for the SCSI to SD. So what I'm going to do now is go ahead and install DOS 5.0, but the Compaq OEM version of DOS 5.0, which has its own installation program. And then once we get that set up, I'm going to go ahead and copy some files over and we can actually see how this guy runs. Okay, so I've got it set up. I got some games and things thrown onto the SD card. Um, I actually waited to install Windows because I wanted to get the Compaq OEM version and there's not one available for download. So I actually just purchased one off eBay, um, but that won't be in in time to finish this video. But uh, as you can see, uh, Compaq DOS boots us right into DOS Shell, which is what I'm very familiar with in that era, um, especially around DOS 5. Trying to get people used to the mouse. Anyway, so I'm just gonna not waste any time and, uh, and show off some of the games.
balance it out by doing Lucas. So one of the things I wanted to do is to install the compact version of DOS and the compact version of Windows, but when I look online, I couldn't find a compact OEM version of Windows anywhere, at least not in English. Uh, I think there's a Dutch and a French version, um, but luckily I went on eBay and uh, I found this. This is a sealed OEM copy of compact Windows 3.1, and it was actually sold by Texalex eBay store. And in the listing, it says that they can't guarantee operation because it was stored in a non-climate controlled warehouse. And my theory is that this also came from Computer Reset, just like where I got the compact from. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, open it up here. Got our user's guide and more importantly, our software packet. As you can see, I'm agreeing to the licensing agreement by breaking this seal. Okay. And it looks like we've got Microsoft Windows. 3.1 Rev A, and it's got one, two, three, four, five, six discs. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, do an archive on these so that these become available to people, and then I'll go ahead and install it. So, I'll be right back. All right, we are backed up. So, let's go ahead and uh, install. I'm gonna do it right from the prompt. OEM version, Compaq, that's great. Cool. And we've got Compaq Utilities, which I guess is really the only thing that it made it different. Let's see what we get. Compaq README. Uh, 
See those displays are pre-installed, which may replace. Okay. Tells me how to change it, how to change network, how to change my that. Okay, W cursor set to enhanced. Uh, <laughs> oh, geez, no, that's terrible. <laughs> Look how big that cursor is. All right, let's set that to normal. What? No! Set to normal, activate. Ah. Oh. Okay, well, that was terrible. And then we get an online library, which brings us to DOS. MS-DOS commands. Huh. And then brings us back to Windows. That's interesting. All right, anything else? Looks like those are the only things that are included in the compact version of Windows 3.1, but anyway, still cool. So that does it for this restoration of the Compact Desk Pro 386-25E. I am very excited about this project. I have been really nervous about um, trying to retrobrite plastics and uh, I'm glad that it worked. Clearly I did a good job here and I should have pulled the gray keys out earlier. I still would say that this is overall a success. And, uh, and, and you can see the plastic of the front matches the keyboard frame that, was, that did not get retrobrite. And so, yeah, I think it looks really good. And it, uh, and you can see kind of here are before uh, of what it looked like before we cleaned everything up. So you can see a huge improvement on this machine. The thing that this thing is now making me rethink is the octet of retro computers. I have retro computers in new cases with new power supplies, I try to be in as maintenance free as possible over here and in in doing this 386 it, it just kind of pulls you back into that era a lot more and so it makes me think or wonder if i should start swapping the octet out with actual retro machines from different companies because when people see that they're going to be drawn into them a lot more when i show off the space to people people just think it's a lan area where it's all modern computers to game against each other and not realizing that they're of different eras and I have to explain it and people kind of don't get it. And so I think seeing the computers of each era is really gonna pull them in. So anyway, uh, I, I want you guys to uh, comment in the comment section and let me know what you think if you think I should switch out the octet with actual machines of the era. Now, I've got two choices if I do that, and one is to do a model that I think is representative of the era. So if I was doing a 386, I'd probably do this, this compact here. Or I could use generic clone manufacturer cases, put the guts of the octet that I already have into those machines, and have different case styles of those eras. And of course, try to get CRTs that are of the era, get keyboards and mice that would match them of those eras. So um, yeah, if you guys have an opinion uh, of how I should go forward with that, let me know. But uh, I just was really impressed with the way this turned out. And I've got a whole storage room full of computers that I got from Computer Reset. And this project just makes me so excited to go forward and start restoring the rest of them because there's a lot of cool stuff in there and a lot of machines that could be resurrected and saved. So anyway, thank you very much for watching. Thank you for subscribing, and of course, uh, see you next time.